Coming up on Family Health Today, Northwest Health System makes a huge announcement. We'll take you there. Later, Lighting Up takes a smoky twist for nicotine lovers trying to get around a smoky ban in their community. And a Northwest Arkansas patient advocate goes to Capitol Hill to improve patient access to life-saving medical imaging services. Family Health Today is next. Welcome to Family Health Today, Arkansas's only weekly in-depth look at the medical and health issues that affect you and your family. Brought to you by Jones Television, in cooperation with our sponsors, Northwest Arkansas Heart and Vascular Center and the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Hello, welcome to Family Health Today. I'm Dr. Jeanette Neshwat. We begin our show from Washington, where the Obama administration says its health care plan will help rein in costs, particularly for small businesses struggling to provide coverage to employees. The administration says escalating health care costs can't be sustained. Vice President Joe Biden says premiums for employer-provided health insurance have doubled in the past nine years, and small businesses have seen them rise 85% since 2000. We hear a lot about health care choices these days, but it's a false choice when a working family are having to choose between going uninsured because of -of out-of-pocket costs, if that's the choice they have to make. And it's a false choice when a small business owner has to decide to decrease or eliminate coverage for their employees just to be able to grow. Mr. Biden says the administration wants to establish a health care exchange where insurers would compete based on standard rules that would preclude denying coverage to individuals with pre-existing medical conditions and limit variations in premiums based on age. Well, people in nearby Oklahoma are divided over the president's health care plan. And when some supporters of President Obama's plan decided to rally at their senator's office, people against the measure came to make their voices heard, too. Ashley Sibley reports. She said Obama, Obama, Obama now. Care says she doesn't she deserve to live. She has or she Obama can care says that 85, one. the best years are behind her. She has an option. She doesn't have to go to this. That, that, that option is a she fantasy. She does not. Both sides are fighting for health care, but what they're fighting for is very different. Al Gerhardt says President Obama's health care plan will leave his mother uninsured. He thinks everyone should pay for their own insurance, but not everyone agrees. We are united, not individual. I have talked to wealthy people that could buy the clinic that they went to or their wife or children went to and they're, they too are appalled at the kind at, at, at the horrific, cruel uh, uh, system that they have to deal with. It's- Brown, a school teacher here in Oklahoma, believes health care in our country needs a makeover. He was hoping to catch Senator Inhofe's attention by starting a rally and presenting a petition showing support for Obama's health care reform. Inhofe has made it no secret he's opposed to the plan, but Brown says it's dead wrong. I think he uh, is uh, uh, unfortunately maybe more concerned about the CEOs of uh, blue state health insurance companies, but I want him to understand that poll after poll is showing that even a majority of Republicans are for this option. Inhofe is in D.C., but even his supporters here are rallying behind him. I agree with paying for your own health care and supporting yourself. Um, It's up to us to take care of it. It is not up to the government to come take money out of my pocket to pay for somebody else's health care. And when these two separate rallies became one, sparks were flying and no one was ready to back down. This isn't about Oklahoma, it's about the whole United States. That's the problem. Amidst health care reform discussion, reimbursement cuts for medical imaging services like MRIs are threatening access to patient care in rural areas, including parts of northwest Arkansas. Well, community leaders, local experts, and patients gathered at the Breast Care Center of Northwest Arkansas on Monday to discuss ways to improve patient access to life-saving medical imaging services and encourage support from the grassroots to the federal level for positive policy solutions. 
The American College of Radiology, along with local health advocates, are urging the House to reconsider a proposed imaging equipment utilization rate change from 50 to 95 percent. If the assumption is dramatically higher than the amount of time a facility's machines are used, the center will be significantly underpaid for their services. It's going to place a real burden on imaging centers because with an increase in the utilization rate and a decrease in the reimbursement rate, imaging centers aren't going to be able to provide the services. Um, and as we've talked about today, a lot of imaging centers may have to shut down because there will be no um, profit. Allison Levin, executive director of Komen Ozark, was on the expert panel that went to Capitol Hill. While in Washington, she emphasized that imaging cuts would have a devastating effect on the ability of physicians to provide much needed imaging care to patients. You may have thought swine flu was gone, but you'd be wrong. In fact, government officials warn the outbreak may get worse this fall as students go back to class and temperatures drop. And the White House is putting all 50 states on alert. A swine flu summit in Washington is working to make sure we're ready if the H1N1 flu comes back full force later the year. The Secretary of Health and Human Services says the government is looking into a vaccine. There are more than 33,000 confirmed or probable cases in the U.S. with 170 deaths. By comparison, the seasonal flu kills about 36,000 people every year in the United States. The Northwest Health System is putting itself on the medical map when it comes to heart health. Network. This month, they announced the creation of the Heart Hospital Network, a virtual hospital model designed to align and expand cardiovascular care in the Arkansas, Oklahoma, Missouri region. This physician-led model would in, will integrate cardiovascular services at Northwest Health System's hospitals in Springdale and Bentonville under the new identity of the Heart Hospital Network. Northwest has committed a significant investment in new equipment, software, and facility re renovations to make the Heart Hospital Network a reality. I'm very pleased that Northwest Health System has taken a bold initiative and has become a walker, not just a talker, in taking what is the best of American health care and bringing it to our region, our home community. This initiative is not a hospital. It's a series of three hospitals. It's not a person. It is assembling a team of people to deliver top-notch care and to follow the best practices as we know it in America today. I've been here more than a quarter of a century, and never has any institution tried to assemble this process, this healthcare team, to upgrade good cardiovascular care to great cardiovascular care. The Heart Hospital Network model unifies various services related to heart and vascular care for more seamless delivery of care. Well, smokers in Ohio have found a new way to get around the state smoking ban in public places at about half the cost of cigarettes. Andrea Cambron reports on another option when it comes to lighting up, and it's electronic. Many smokers these days are unhappy. First, there was the state smoking ban. It's a little irritating that, you know, I come to my favorite bar and I'm not allowed to sit down and smoke, you know, when I have a beer. Then the 62 cent federal tax hike on cigarettes. I'm not real happy about the situation. Now some smokers are finding a surprising alternative, one that's about half the cost. This neighborhood bar has folks drinking and people smoking, despite the smoking ban. But these smokes are black, not white. They glow blue, not red. They're electronic cigarettes. It's kind of a logical alternative to smoking. Dustin Claypool is a local distributor for in-life electronic cigarettes. The steel tubes contain a battery, an atomizer, and a cartridge. The cartridge uh, contains nicotine and water and a food additive called propylene glycol. Dustin says you breathe in nicotine and exhale water vapor without tobacco's 4,000 chemicals and carcinogens. His non-smoking partner, Steve Petrosino, says that helps those who can't or won't quit. They enjoy the act of smoking. They're going to continue smoking. Both men say this is a healthier choice compared to traditional smokes. Logic tells you that this is better for you. Plus, you can use it in bars, restaurants. You can use it on an airplane. So, you know, it kind of gives smokers back their rights a little bit. A spokesperson for the state health department says since the devices don't burn tobacco, the smoking ban doesn't apply. But smoker Leanne Byrne says courtesy does. So before she lights up, she shows it to the manager. 
I wouldn't want someone coming into my establishment and just automatically taking this thing out without approaching me with it first. Steve says they're also fire safe. Drop them and they turn themselves off. How many home fires are caused by smoking? And if you fall asleep with this in, in your hand and it rolls into the bed with you, it's not going to light anything on fire. But Shelly Kaiser of the American Lung Association says no one knows how healthy an electronic cigarette really is. There's no research to prove its safety. And since it dispenses nicotine, a drug, the Food and Drug Administration considers it a drug delivery device. They have stopped the import of this device into the United States, and it's possible that soon they will stop the sale of this product. But until then, Leanne plans to enjoy. It actually fulfills every craving that you would have off of a regular tobacco cigarette. The best thing is just to have clean air in your lungs. Whether they're natural or electronic, you'll still have a higher risk of heart disease and lung cancer if you smoke those cigarettes. Anyway, stressed out, it might have something to do with where you live. According to a study in the American Journal of Preventative Medicine, the frequent mental distress factor defined as having 14 or more days of stress depression, or emotional problems is higher for some Americans. Researchers found citizens in Hawaii had a lower FMD rating than those in, say, the Appalachian region. The stress level varied according to the state or region's income, social structure, and jobless rate. The Centers for Disease Control says these figures are important because they give the government a better idea where mental health programs are needed. Tired of the same old exercise routine? interval walking may help jumpstart your interest and your metabolism. Instead of going at a steady state, warm up between three to five minutes, then walk almost as fast as you can for 30 seconds, then recover for another 30 seconds. You will burn more calories, more fat in less time, the time will go much faster, and you'll improve your fitness levels. A Gadsden, a cardiologist, says no matter how hard some people work at diet and exercise, they often reach a plateau. He claims interval walking revs up your metabolism to lose belly fat and improve sugar and insulin levels. Do you want to drop a few pounds but are confused by all the different diets? Well, forget about the diets. Just think fewer calories. According to a Harvard study in the New England Journal of Medicine, one diet isn't any better than the next. It really matters how many calories you're eating every day. Researchers looked at a little more than 800 obese patients and assigned them four heart-healthy diets, a quarter on carbohydrate-heavy diet, the remaining divided into high-fat, low-fat, and high-protein diets. They found those who ate fewer calories, no matter what they ate, lost the most weight. Well, up next on Family Health Today, medical tips for men on how to live long, healthy lives. It's all coming right up here on Family Health Today on Jones Television, Channel 22. Getting fit, eating right, and staying up on the latest health news. They're good habits that can help you look and feel your best. You can get the details on the top health and medical stories every week in the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, the state's largest newspaper. Take a more hands-on approach to good health and pick up some good habits, like the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Welcome back. Do you know the top men's health threats? The list is surprisingly short, including heart disease, cancer, and unintentional injury. But thankfully, most of these threats are largely preventable. To explore this topic, we are joined by Dr. Ruben Tejada, who specializes in internal medicine. Dr. Tejada, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, we're talking about men's health tonight. Tell us what are some components and factors on uh, how to live a long and healthier life when it comes to men. When it comes to men and women, basically there are some minor differences, but you know, with men, uh, heart disease is the number one killer. Mm -hmm. um, even though more women die of heart disease than men, but it's quite common. Uh, heart disease being the number one killer in men. Now. Then risk factors for heart disease included, including all the diseases like diabetes, high cholesterol and smoking, sedentary lifestyle and obesity. So I will say those will be the top uh, risk factors mm -hmm. for men. 
Are you seeing uh, younger patients coming into your clinic being diagnosed with diseases that you normally see in an older population? Oh, absolutely. And this is a good question because uh, when you should go and see an internist, when you should go and see a doctor, uh, most guys, we don't like to go to the doctor unless we have pain. Mm -hmm. But normally um, uh, around age 35, between age 35 to 45, you do see already an increase in, in heart disease, okay? And obviously obesity is one of those things that you see now younger individuals uh, not exercising and eating too many saturated, saturated fat and, and junk food. Well, you talked uh, about earlier about heart disease and, and that being a big killer in men and women. Having high cholesterol, how does that contribute to heart disease and heart attacks? And how can men and women, you know, keep that in check? Well, you got to look at it this way. Heart disease is a lifestyle disease. You choose to get a heart attack. That's how I, how I tell patients. So how do you do that? Well, you have to look at it in terms of the risk factors. So cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So cholesterol, basically what it is, is a fat and it's an animal fat. So you need to eat more things that come from the ground, vegetables, fruits, things of that nature, and then balance it out and eat fish and chicken. But there are people that eat meat or cholesterol uh, in every meal, animal products, including cheese, you know, bacon, um, ham, milk, chocolate, you know. So you really have to look at it in terms of how you are going to approach those risk factors and then exercise and how to balance diet. A lot of people, especially people who aren't in the medical world, they think, oh, high cholesterol, that'll just cause a heart attack. But they don't realize it not only can it cause, you know, diabetes, worse than diabetes, cause strokes. What other type of medical problems can it cause besides heart attacks and strokes? That's a good question also because cholesterol also is not just for the heart, mm -hmm. it's for the entire body. For example, peripheral vascular disease. And that means is accumulating cholesterol in the small vessels of the, of the body and you create plaques. This is what gives you the heart attack. When these plaques rupture due to the flow of the blood, then you start to really bleed. Then platelets comes and give you a clot, form a clot, and that's the heart attack. If it happens in the brain, you get a stroke. If it happens in the heart, you get a, you know, a heart attack. Mm -hmm. So it can happen basically anywhere in your body. I see. What what other organs can it affect besides the brain, the heart? Oh, uh, kidney mm -hmm. will be a, a third one, but the entire system is affected by it. Yeah. What about blood pressure? Men having high blood pressure, how does that contribute to an unhealthy lifestyle? This is one of those uh, silent killer because obviously it doesn't cause any pain, and if you don't check it, you can really never tell where your blood pressure is. And the lower your blood pressure, the better. And we have changed these numbers, you know, throughout the years. Um, in the good old days, you know, being old and have a blood pressure in the 150, let's say 70 year old with pressure of 160, it was okay. Mm -hmm. And nowadays we know better. So you really need to control the pressure and go and have a check. What do you think causes high blood pressure in men? Especially we don't know really. Uh, we have primary and secondary mm -hmm. causes, but <clears throat> essential hypertension, which is the most common, we don't know the cause. But he runs in families. But having a sedentary lifestyle and weight, gaining weight, obesity, with a BMI or body mass index greater than 30, that also increases your risk of having high blood pressure two to four times. I understand having high cholesterol and high cholesterol and high blood pressure, are those two factors that can cause also erectile dysfunction in men? Absolutely. And if you look at it, they all kind of connect to diabetes, smoking, high blood pressure and cholesterol, quite common those combinations and they cause many diseases including what is killing us now the heart attacks the stroke peripheral vascular disease mm -hmm. and obviously erectile dysfunction in male too because affecting the the blood flow into the pelvic area i see do you see uh, alcoholism or just you know alcohol more than two or three drinks a day increasing men's blood pressure and causing problems how common do you is that when it's quite common uh, you'd be surprised especially in the south a lot of people drink and it's all good you know i mean and studies have shown 
that if you drink one for men, mm -hmm. one or two drinks with meals, it's actually good for you. It drops your blood pressure and it's good for your heart. But if you go over two meals, I mean over two drinks mm -hmm. per meal, then that will increase your risk of having high blood pressure and subsequently affecting the heart. So more than two drinks for men and then more than one drink for women, for women. is considered excess? Yes. Okay, and is that per day? Per day. All right. Well, sometimes, you know, we're in a recession, people are stressed out, and they go to, they turn to alcohol to help relieve their stress. But what's not, what are some healthy stress tips and ways for men to stay healthy, keep their blood pressure under control, keep their cholesterol under control, and uh, live longer? Exercise. Uh -huh. That will be, and one thing that I do is breathe better learn to really take a deep breath very slowly and that helps it really is amazing but just taking your time to take a deep breath instead of having a drink or smoke mm -hmm. a cigarette and you forget about it and it works and then go for a walk and think about something that will make you smile i always think happiness is is the key to to a long life so exercise you say how often should one exercise some people say, you know, one hour a day, five days a week, 30 minutes a day, four times a week. What do you think? How much you can do? That's <laughs> what I tell patients. You know, ideally, it will be, you know, it depends on your schedule. Like, I would love to exercise every day, but I can't. So, but I stay active. I take the stairs where I work. And then if you can do what is recommended, mm -hmm. you know, because we need to kind of give them a prescription or how to exercise. I usually tell them to do 30 minutes or 45 minutes of a decent walk every day, you know, and then take it from there. And if you start to get better, then you can actually speed it up and start jogging or sometimes do it twice a day. So but it's, it's according to your schedule and how you are able to really squeeze it in your daily. Sure, and then just kind of building up your yeah, endurance. and start slow and move up. What are some important screening tests, Dr. Tejada, that you recommend for all male patients? Cholesterol, again, mm -hmm. I mean, they should have a check. Usually in the early 20s, we should start screening already for cholesterol and blood pressure. Uh, those are very too easy to do. Anybody, you know, in any clinic, they can do it. And then obviously we have other uh, tests that we do as we get older. Mm -hmm. Usually the cutoff will be for men 50. We start doing then uh, PSA or prostate, prostate specific antigen to screen for uh, prostate cancer. And then also um, colonoscopies, because most of these diseases like heart disease increase increases with age. So the older you get, the more screening you have to do. I see. Any other health tips uh, to stay healthy and live longer, Dr. Tata? That's a good question. That's a $1 million <laughs> question. But yeah. usually you, you have to stay uh, happy, you know, do things that actually try to eliminate stress mm -hmm. out of your life, walk, try to laugh, uh, try to eat healthy, stay low in calories, 1,200, 1,500 calories a day, distributed throughout the day, eat more uh, fruits and vegetables and eat meat also and have a drink you know with your meals and uh, and enjoy it and you know you just have to be lucky sometimes you can do all those things and still get sick because there's still a lot of things that we don't know about these diseases but we have come a long way though in treatment and understanding what causes the okay. disease well dr Tejada, thank you so much for being here with us today we appreciate thank it thank you for having me Coming up on Family Health Today, how to get your kids interested in healthy eating. We'll show you how to do it next on Family Health Today. Award-winning Jones Television, Northwest Arkansas's 24-hour nonprofit cable cast is now on the internet. JonesTV.org features a first-hand look at what the station is doing for the organizations and people of your community. The site gives you access to the daily TV schedule, as well as various clips of shows hosted by local experts. And our community calendar gives local organizations the opportunity to promote upcoming events in Northwest Arkansas. Jones Television, Channel 22, bringing you timely community programming, public service announcements that benefit our nonprofit partners, and now an easier way to learn more about us. www.jonestv.org. Welcome back. Ringworm, which isn't a worm at all, can affect not only the skin, but also the nails and scalp. We get more on this medical condition from the pharmacy.
Ringworm is a fungal infection that develops on the top layer of your skin. It is characterized by an itchy red circle of rash with healthy looking skin in the middle. Ringworm is contagious and can spread in the following ways. Ringworm often spreads by direct skin to skin contact with an infected person. From animal to human, you can contact ringworm by touching an animal with ringworm. Ringworm can spread while petting or grooming dogs or cats. You can also get ringworm from ferrets, rabbits, goats, pigs, and horses. From objects to human, ringworm can be spread by contact with objects or surfaces that an infected person or animal has touched, such as clothing, towels, bed lemons, combs, or brushes. It can go from soil to human. In rare cases, ringworm can be spread to humans by contact with infected soil. Infection would most likely occur only from prolonged contact with this highly infected soil. An over-the-counter topical medicine, myconazole, can be used to treat ringworms, but you may need a prescription strength topical or oral medication. From the pharmacy, I'm Carl Collier. The percentage of American children with weight problems has increased since 1980, according to a study released in the Journal of the American Medical Association. So how do you make sure your child doesn't become a negative statistic? As Melissa Long reports for Health Minute, getting children to cook healthy foods can help them make healthy choices. They get to mix, measure, even wield a knife. Perfect, perfect. See, then you can't cut your fingers off. Personal chef Carlin Brining is teaching these three to five-year-olds how to cook. Whisk together buttermilk. They can't read, but they can follow directions, and that means lots of chopping, trying new spices, even separating egg whites. Let the white go out. Sometimes it's quite messy. My goal with the little kids is I want them to eat better, but... I want it to be fun. Chef Brining finds that introducing young children to a variety of healthy food choices usually leads to better eating habits and less fast food. On the menu today, baked chicken fingers, baked zucchini fries, and yogurt parfait. They are familiar with French fries, but we use zucchini sticks. And like the chicken, they're baked, not fried. Chef Brining says hands-on learning helps kids become comfortable in the kitchen and more willing to try new foods. And hopefully, then they're not going to become picky eaters. Class is over, and now it's time for the taste test. For five-year-old Daniel Moore, his first lesson seems to be a success. For today's Health Minute, I'm Melissa Long. Thanks for being with us for Arkansas's only weekly medical report. If you have any health news or story ideas that you'd like to see on our program, we'd like to hear from you. Visit our website, jonestv.org, and drop us a line. Join us next time here on Jones Television, Channel 22. I'm Dr. Jeanette Neshwat. soldier. I live the army values. I will never accept defeat. I am disciplined, physically and mentally tough. I am the guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am the Army National Guard. Defend freedom. Visit 1-800-GO-GUARD.COM today.